So you've done a reaction and made a new, interestingly coloured compound. Or you've extracted a powerful new medicine from an interesting natural source. How do you prove it's what you think it is? How do you find out what it is if you have no idea? Your first step is to isolate and purify the compound, using different solvents to extract, separate, perhaps changing the pH in an acid-base separation, then using chromatography, distillation, or recrystallization to give you a pure compound. Then comes the process of structural elucidation, which takes advantage of a number of different powerful techniques. In this course, we're going to talk about infrared spectroscopy, often known simply as IR. Also, ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, or UV-vis, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, NMR, and mass spectrometry, MS or mass spec for short. Other important techniques like combustion analysis and X-ray crystallography will wait for another day. Spectroscopy is all about light, indeed the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum, and the interaction of that light with matter, i.e. molecules. In the simplest sense, light or radiation interacts with a sample, energy is absorbed giving rise to a signal in the spectrum, and from that signal we work backwards to deduce structural information about the molecular structure. The spectroscopic techniques we're going to talk about use infrared and UV-vis radiation, as per the names of those techniques, and also long wavelength radio waves in NMR. Starting then with IR spectroscopy. Well, energy at IR wavelengths causes bonds to vibrate. A range of different vibrations are possible, depending on the shape of the molecule and the bonds that are present. The precise energy of IR radiation that is absorbed depends on the type of vibration and the types of bond, so this gives us a method to investigate what sorts of bonds are present in our molecule. So a typical IR spectrum looks something like this. On the y-axis, we show the percentage transmittance, or sometimes the percentage absorbance. The more light that has been absorbed, or the less it's transmitted, meaning the same thing effectively, the stronger the signal. So signals like this one here, or over here, those are strong signals. Whereas a little blip like this one up here, not so strong. Along the x-axis, we have an energy scale. The unit for this are reciprocal centimetres, or wave numbers, which is the inverse of the wavelength. A typical IR spectrum scans the range below 4,000 wave numbers. And where in the spectrum that signals appear depends directly on what bonds are present in the molecule. Infrared spectra can hold a lot of subtle detail. But for now, we're going to use IR to recognize just the presence of several key functional groups, which give characteristic absorptions in the IR spectrum. Watch out in particular for strong, broad signals above 3,000 wave numbers. These indicate that OH or NH bonds are present, as in alcohols, carboxylic acids, amines, for example. Look also for strong, sharp peaks between 1650 and 1800 wave numbers. A signal here tells you that your molecule contains a carbonyl group, C double bond O, as in aldehydes, ketones, esters, and so forth. Now, can you put it into practice and decide which of these three compounds is most likely to give rise to this IR spectrum? Note that these compounds are on the left an ether, in the middle, an aldehyde, and on the right, an alcohol. Of these three functionalities, only the alcohol has an OH group that would give rise to this strong signal at about 3300 wave numbers. That's our key to solving the puzzle here, and this must be the spectrum of this third compound, 1-propanol. Turning now to UV-vis spectroscopy. In this region of the electromagnetic spectrum, the light will excite electrons from a full molecular orbital to an empty one, 
So we can use UV vis spectroscopy to deduce information about the electronic structure within a molecule. In particular, we can use it to determine whether or not a molecule contains conjugation. Looking at indigo here, for example, conjugation is an alternating pattern of single and double or triple bonds that contains at least two pi bonds separated by just the one sigma bond. For example, here, double, single, double, single, double around that ring. Or within the molecule, a double, single, double sequence here. Generally speaking, organic molecules will only show an absorption in the UV visible region if they contain conjugation, because this changes the energy gap between the occupied and unoccupied molecular orbitals. That means we're going to use UV vis spectroscopy to determine the presence or absence of conjugation. So, can you apply that? Which of these compounds would you expect to show an absorption in the UV visible spectrum, i.e., which of these compounds are conjugated? Well, this benzoic acid clearly is, looking around the ring here, that uh, alternating pattern of single and double bonds. Cycloheptatriene in the middle here is also conjugated through the bottom section of the molecule. And so is this diiron. In this case, it's two triple bonds that are conjugated. The aldehyde down here is also conjugated. The oxygen atom is involved in that conjugated system. And this diene conjugated as well. Note that the two compounds we haven't boxed, the diene here and this cyclohexadiene down here, while they contain two double bonds, they're separated by more than one sigma bond. So that means they are not in conjugation. The third of our spectroscopic techniques, NMR, is the most powerful of all and gives us detailed information about the relative position of different nuclei, i.e. atoms, within a molecule. We will talk a lot more about this in lectures. But in a nutshell, NMR uses radio frequency energy to change nuclear spin while a molecule is held within a strong magnetic field. The same physical process is the basis of magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. Finally, mass spectrometry, which is a little different. Note that the S word is spectrometry rather than spectroscopy. Mass spec involves bombarding a sample with a high energy beam of electrons, or similar, to generate ions, then accelerating these ions through an electric field and watching as the ions fragment. It's a little bit like the molecular equivalent of blowing on the seed head of a dandelion, and effectively allows us to weigh individual molecules and thus determine the molecular mass of unknown compounds. We will talk more about mass spec in lectures this week as well. Overall, this gives us a very powerful toolkit. Using IR spectroscopy, we can fingerprint for individual functional groups. Using UV vis spectroscopy, we're determining whether or not our molecule contains conjugation, that is, alternating single and multiple bonds. NMR allows us to build a detailed structural picture of the position of individual atoms within molecules. And mass spec gives us molecular weight information from which we can work out a molecular formula. Using these techniques in combination, we can begin to work out structures for unknown compounds and so better understand the molecular world around us. Use them well, use them wisely.